All right, everybody, I'm here to show you guys the Overlambulance. It's actually for sale and you guys could own it. It's totally livable, off-road ready, and we're gonna give you a quick tour of it just so you can see what it's all about. All right, guys, so what we have here is a 2001 Ford Econoline E450 chassis. It's the cutaway because it has the ambulance on it. It does have a 7.3 liter power stroke diesel and it has 70,000 original miles, 71,000 original miles. I got this vehicle from Kitsap Fire in Silverdale, Washington as a two wheel drive vehicle, brought it down and we did all the four wheel drive conversion. And I did verify that the miles are original, only 71,000 original miles on a power stroke. That's like unheard of. And what year is this? 2001. 2001. So has the has the rig ever been in a wreck or anything like that? Do you know any vehicle history with that? You know, it's never been in an accident. It is the second. So the box that's on the back was on an older ambulance. And then when they upgraded to the newer uh, cutaway, they actually put that box on there. So it's called the remount. Oh, this box right here? Correct. Okay. So um this thing was very very well maintained if you guys know of any good sized fire departments they always maintain their vehicles really well and this one was a it's called the rehab unit so it didn't transport any patients you don't have to worry about any bad juju worried about oh man people were dying in here and there was not this just went to fires and when the firefighters would come out they would have the awning out with gatorade and stuff and they would just hydrate up and they called it rehab so that's a good thing to point out yeah and you know a lot of people are like oh, i don't know somebody might have died in there and it's like no technically we're we're really just like life support nobody dies in the ambulance you know when we get them to the hospital if they decide to call them there so if anything there's good vibes because you were doing your best to keep them alive the whole time like a pretty stout bumper what do you got for a winch on here so this is a custom bumper that was built for me by a friend of mine, uh, Uinta Adventures on Instagram. If you guys want to check him out, he has other ones. It has uh, just a Badlands winch because I don't, you know, they got a really good review and it's more than enough for what I need. I try not to get myself in any situations. How many pounds is it? 13.5. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. And there is a light bar here in the bumper. Cool. And this cut this was a custom made bumper? Correct. So what have we got here for suspension? So the suspension we went with the Dana 60. Um, all this stuff was off of a build that was done by Quigley four-wheel drive systems, and it was a pull-off that we we're able to find from uh, an ambulance back east that had rusted out, so we got it and you know put it back together refreshed it up rebuilt the front axle the dana 60 it has a dana 80 in the rear that's, that's it huge. ended up uh lifting the ambulance a total of about four inches and leveling it out and then we got another four to five inches with the 37 inch nittle mud grapplers that we put on here those are so awesome looking and so though it was two-wheel drive like i said when we got it now we did the four-wheel drive conversion and when this thing when you put it into four low I was really surprised because, you know, a 7.3 is not a fast motor. It can be built, but just right out the gate stock, they're, they're strong and they're known for the reliability, not for their speed. But man, you put this thing in four low and it just like pulls like instantly. It'll climb anything. But my house isn't there. I don't really want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. toss it all around, you know? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Anything else you want to tell us about the front suspension here? or um, We have uh, Bilstein shocks all the way around. And the uh, actual control arms are custom because uh, no matter which uh, lift you do on it, whether it's a leaf spring or a coil, which these are coils, you sometimes have tire rub on your control arms or on the leaf springs. And these actually have a little notch in them um, with like some really heavy plate welded on the outside so that there's very minimal rub and you can, you know, pretty much do anything on it off-road now. 
All right, so in this compartment, it's just primarily our solar stuff. Um, I have a 300 amp hour TENS battery. I've got the um, Renogy. I think it's the, I forgot the model number. It's up here up top, if you can get that. Let's but it's see. basically a charger controller and DC to DC uh, charger too. So when the vehicle's running, it'll detect whether it's coming from the alternator or not. And when it senses that the alternator is running, it'll charge the battery from the alternator. And then when it shuts off and it senses that it loses the alternator, it'll switch back to the panels up top. And one of the things that I really like that I'll point out on this cabinet, and I won't do it on all the other ones, is how thick these doors are. Um, they also have insulation inside of them. And then they have this cool mechanism with springs both on front and back of it so it helps keep it open but at the same time once it goes past a certain point it helps keep it shut too and then the lights up top are original so we're able to keep that and maintain it and i mean when they're shut they're shut <laughs> yeah they're not open <laughs> yeah so this is the back side of the fridge and access to the shelf up there and again you have a uh, yeah, and a, and a 110 plug up there that you can access when the inverter's on. Oh, yeah, I see that. And then in the back corner, you can also see there's some lit up numbers, and that's the voltage yeah. coming in, and you know, cigarette lighter for to run the refrigerator. That's the outlet for that. Cool. How big's your fridge? Shoot, I have no idea the actual that's a dimensions big one. of it. And then in here, we have the regular car batteries for the engine. Okay. So no draw for your living space from those? None at all. Okay. Nope. The only thing that even remotely links it is that there is a power that comes off it that runs to that DC to DC controller. That way it can charge the house batteries off of the alternator. Okay. And in this compartment right chill, we just have a little fire pit propane style. That way, when they got the fire bands on, which they're probably going to do this year because of all the moisture we've had, there's going to be a lot of, you know, possibility for wildfires and stuff with all the overgrowth. Yeah. So hopefully it won't, but you never know. <laughs> you know, I love this right here. You got the workout bar on the yeah, back. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and then I usually carry a couple plates back here in my garage is what I like to call it. The bed... Uh, platform is all made out of electricians unistrut so it's kind of like an erector set mm -hmm. just bolts it together and it made for a very sturdy platform with no legs coming down that are going to be in the way because it blocked it bolts directly into the studs in the wall that's awesome that's great so like you said you put your bikes in here and you're all set yep the Plenty mountain bikes go in here and then these are uh mounts for my um motion detector lights that are currently charging i just stick them up there they're magnetic mm -hmm. and when you open the doors they sense that or you can hit the switch and it'll just run all the time yeah i uh you gave me some of those I'll use yeah them. they're nice. awesome huh mm -hmm. i love them and these things are so sturdy like these these massive piano hinges like i'm like mm -hmm. 250 and i literally will climb put my foot up here and climb up and put all my body weight on this door and it doesn't move it doesn't budge it doesn't you know mm -hmm. can't even tell you're on there I'm definitely a solid the build machine like this right here. no mistakes just happy accidents <clears throat> and this compartment is uh just where i keep a couple extra things it's usually my tool storage as you can see it's pretty pretty bare right now because I'm transitioning into the other rig nice nice big storage space lots of storage these shelves are so strong and this is pretty much like the utility closet still got my blackstone in there 15 gallons of fresh water in there um, got the Chinese diesel heater and that's actually my gray tank for the kitchen sink right here yep and the heater is right there yeah, very nice. Does really good. Heats up really nice. And then what's in, the coldest you've been in? Is it this winter? Probably, yeah. And it's been down 
in the single digits and it's still overwhelming i have to turn it down and run it on the first setting because mm. i think it's the five kilowatt and really i could have done with just the two. Oh yeah yeah i got the five on accident because i did have the two and it went down and then we got the outdoor propane uh tankless water heater Mm -hmm. which has the shower up top you can take down and take an outdoor shower but it also heats the water that's in the kitchen sink very nice cool, and then man. that's the pole for the awning that was already existing that i mentioned um that they would put out on fires and all the lights that are not blacked out do work so we're able to maintain these uh they call them scene lights so when you're parked somewhere, you can just flip the switches and they work pretty well. You can control it from the left side or driver's side or passenger side. And then on the back, I forgot to point out that there's a couple of yellow amber lights and those are controlled by a switch on the dash too. So if you're back here doing something and don't want to get so many bugs coming around, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You can do it. Turn that on. Very cool. Yeah, and that's about it for the outside, honestly. Okay. Pretty simple on the roof we have a Coleman AC that I put on there and two max air fans, uh, two ZAMP 115 amp hour solar panels. So it does well. 115 amp hour or 115 watt? 115 watt. Okay. Solar panels. Yeah. ZAMP 115 watt. 115 amp. Whoa. <laughs> you blowing stuff up? What's up, buddy? All right, so a lot of you know, some of you don't, that I am a retired firefighter. And when the opportunity came to build an ambulance, I thought, man, I know how to drive those. So driving them and building them is completely different, but it's a great platform. And I wanted it to really feel like home. So um, I didn't want to take away every aspect of the ambulance, which is why I left some of the clear cabinets that you see here and some of the other uh, rare things you're about to see that are still true to the ambulance, and I'll point those out. But I did a little cedar roofing, little backsplash, and we're gonna check all that out right now. Was that from Fletch? <laughs> no, it was uh, Along Came Polly. Oh, okay. Mm. So anyway, this is, uh, pretty much the fridge and a little bit of storage here. I wanted to point out that up here is the original AC and heater that runs only when the vehicle is running. And that's why I ended up putting a rooftop unit because I'm not always moving, but it is nice to have this so that it cools the back while you're driving. Um, this is the regular roll up door that was here. Normally we would keep a drug box in here and we'd lock it up. I don't actually have the key for it, but you can have one made. And then we'd be able to get the drug box from the inside or the outside. Um, currently, my rave glow sticks are there. And uh, it's, just a, <laughs> it's just a little catch-all, I guess you would. Uh, things that I use um, on the daily. These, I have them here so I can remember to give them out to kids and stuff. Little um, tools and little guitar amp that I could hook up real quick and jam have a straight up jam session. And then we got the Nova cool fridge freezer combo. And in here we got some popsicles. Good. It does great for like popsicles and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but not so much on like ice cream that has like salt in it. So like any kind of like briars or anything like that, it's almost like soft serve. We're gonna have to bust out those, uh, those popsicles things. in yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Oh, nice. And then, uh, you got a full fridge of stuff in here. Yep. Yeah. Just got some delicious treats. Oh, yes. Mushroom chocolate. There we go. Healthy mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> They're all healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can see that I got the um, light here for the entryway. And then we've got cedar planks for the ceiling. These are actually repurposed um, dome lights. You can do left and right lows and brights on each side which makes it kind of nice because you can decide what you want set the mood if you will and that that's kind of a this is the, the original panel it is the original panel that's cool so these are all the original switches 
you I kept that and this actually controls the AC when you're driving and then this is actually I put in this is the um, DC to DC the solar controller mm -hmm. and you can see like there's the right there it shows the alternator and that'll be flashing once you're driving I see Get your inverter oh, very nice and you can see right here in the top left corner that's actually the solar panels it's, oh, yeah, it's supposed to be a panel like with a you know a light mm -hmm. and then we do have the electrical panel and ever since kevin was able to go in there and minimize everything i was able to repurpose it as a pantry oh yeah because this was just a mess of wires wasn't it there was over 150 relays and we pulled out like probably a couple hundred pounds of wire wow doing this so it was insane it's nice to have a pantry like that you got a lot of storage space in here with all these cabinets yeah and then we have a, a little safe here we do have the combo for that um we have a couple storage compartments on the side there and then over there i have some more stack clothes and then like i said i was able to repurpose some of these cabinets um because i wanted to have like a home and industrial feel and i wanted the, the cabinets are so well built from the ambulance company anyway it's kind of mm -hmm. was silly to get rid of them the only ones i get rid of was a huge bank that was in the back and that was so I could get the queen size bed, which I'll show you in a second. But we've got a little drawer here and you know, utensils and stuff and pens and got some aluminum foil. Um, nice little counter space. I have my cat on top of the uh, faucet, my hat on top of the faucet. But this is the sink here with the little cutting board. I lay all my stuff in there so that it doesn't fall around and then I have access to it. One of the first things I usually do is pull out my water filter and set it up here and fill it up so me and Willow have nice fresh water. It's deep, it has a dryer in it, um, it has a little grate so that you can um, you know, pick it up. Mm -hmm. So all the food and stuff that you pour down there and it has a plug and everything, it works really well. Like I've been really stoked at how well it's worked. And it's, you can actually wash dishes in it. You know, a lot of people build these ones and it's like a sink that you can't even put a plate in, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, come on. It, we needs, to be, use it, it. needs to be functional. Yeah. And then we've got a max air fan here and one in the back. This one, you can control it forward or back. And that back one only is an exhaust. So I'll put this one, I'm blowing in and that one out. Open up a side window, man. You got a vortex of air going through, you know. Mm -hmm. That's so important, especially in the summer months, to set that nice sort of the airflow circulation going on. Yeah, and we just turned it on even a little bit for Sierra, so she wouldn't get hot while we got some lunch. Mm -hmm. No, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Over here, this was an original jump seat, and now I have this little cushion here. It just kind of locks it, but you can lift this up, and there's a. That's what I use for the cooktop there, because I like to cook outside a lot. So there is enough solar if you wanted to just use an induction cooktop, you could just put it in here and then plug it in when you wanted to turn on the inverter. Mm -hmm. It's got enough juice to do that, you know what I mean? A big enough inverter, which is like, I think it's a two or 3000 watt inverter and it peaks out at like 4,500. So that's why you're able to utilize this for the AC. And the AC also has a soft start hooked up to it so it doesn't draw as much when it cycles on and off, which really trips a lot of breakers or mm -hmm. generators, you know? Yeah. Um, along with that, the 30 amp plug in the outside is still connected. So if you wanted to run a generator or plug in somewhere, you can, and it still all works, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got some storage here. Right now I just have a bunch of blankets and dog food in there. And it's pretty deep. It goes back pretty far and it's Oh yeah. And it's deep as well. And it's just foam. You know, I didn't line it or anything. It's just the foam when they sprayed it. Like um, over the back of the back of the truck. Yeah. And then uh got a little shelf up here. A lot of people don't notice it. So it's kind of cool. You can put stuff up there that you kind of want forgotten or that people won't see when they come in, you know what I mean? Um so queen size bed plus there's enough room to have a little i use it for a little library and my cables for charging at night but it's got a, an extra six inches here and you can utilize it for whatever i just use it for like i said some little bit of storage mm -hmm. and this is a full full queen size yeah it's an actual queen it's not an rv queen it's a like regular house right. queen size bed and then uh 
These cabinets are from Home Depot. They're just regular shaker cabinets. And we built this base around them. And yeah, give it a pull. I use the same uh, things here for the locking mechanism as they use on these clear cabinets just to keep it all the same. So it's literally the same as in here. Mm -hmm. well, that's nice to have. Those locking things are important. Yeah, and they're super, you can adjust them. So once the springs start wearing out, you can tighten on both sides and it'll push it harder and make it a little more firm. And then you've got these doors here. Um, under here, I keep like a Lego blue case of emergencies, some toilet trees, paper towels. And under here, I got my mixer, my drone, little keyboard, some hair clippers and stuff. You got tons of storage. And then where you're sitting is also the old bench seat. And I was able to utilize that as storage. And it goes all the way back past the wheel mm -hmm. hump where you saw when I opened it up, my long board was in there and stuff. Yeah. And there's a couple axes in there and stuff. And then if you ever needed it, you have this that you can bring down as well. You know what I mean? For another little table or something. Mm -hmm. Set up your computer or a screen or something. This is nice. Oh yeah, all the way back there. This is huge. You can put tons of stuff in there. So much room for activities. Well, cool, man. Yeah, and that's about it. I, I cut the pass through through there. It didn't have that before. It just had a... I realized it was just a file cabinet there. And I was able to remove the file cabinet and it made a nice little pass through. Nice. All right, now the big question everybody's asking. What's How this, much what's, is it? What are you going to sell this for? So, if... I, I'm looking to get about 90000 out of it. Everything's negotiable. If you're serious about it, talk to me. I'll tell you the things that I want to do to it. The things that, you know, maybe we can negotiate those things out if you don't, if you want to do it yourself, you know what I mean? A couple things like I talked to you about, maybe going a little bit smaller tire, you know, for the average person or something. You know, part of it, um, the size of the tires was for the wow factor because I go to a lot of meetups and the kids love it. Like they absolutely, to them, it's a monster truck ambulance. You know what I mean? So would it be more practical to the 35s? I think so. You know what I mean? And it'd, it'd ride a little better and stuff like that, which it actually surprisingly rides well. You just rode yeah, in it. Yeah, that's rides real comfy. It's smooth. It feels solid. Climbs like a little mountain goat, even though it's a big old beast. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there's little things that we can talk about if you want to make an offer on it as is. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then I have the Fuso um, camper that I'm switching into and... I mean, if somebody wants that and you want to give me 120 grand for it, I'll just keep the ambulance. You know what I mean? So there's that too. And I'll give you a link. Maybe you can put it in the description to the Fuso on my channel. And okay. I did it like two years ago, unknowing that I was going to buy it. <laughs> Sweet, dude. Yeah. And then we'll also put um, either like an email address or a contact, way to contact you about this. Yeah. So if people are watching this, they want to get in touch with you. Yeah. Email on the subject line, just put, you know, ambulance for sale so that I can check my junk mail and stuff and separate them. Instagram, you can find me at Happy's Trails underscore. Uh, you can find me on Facebook with the just Happy's Trails. Don't forget the S after the Happy. And then on YouTube, Happy's Trails. And I'm sure Brian will throw some links in the description for you guys. Yeah, we'll put those on there. Yeah. All right, everybody, links are in the video description below to contact Jason. Also, the links to his social media if you want to check out the video he did on the Fuso a couple years ago, which he just purchased, which he referenced at the end of the video there. Uh, that's down there below as well. And if you want to contact Jason, um, you can either go through me, and I'll relay the message to him, or you can get in touch with him directly, which is what I'd recommend with the links below because sometimes I'm in his comments. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to join me on Rumble. The link's in the video description below as I'm uh, reducing my reliance here on YouTube due to all the censorship. And I really appreciate your support. So thanks a lot. Y'all have a great day. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.